members of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Our phone number is 888 825 Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. He's host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, where he discusses mental health and relationship health. And uh, we're here to talk to you about your life and your money today. So it's perfect that he's here. Again, the phone number, 888-825-5225. Mike is with us. Mike's in uh, Houston. Hey, Mike, how are you? Hey, Dave, how are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hey, I really need your help. Um, I need your help with my financial discipline. I need to, I moved my, back home this year. Um, my parents told me that I have this year to fix my finances. I make 105000 a year, and I'm totally in debt, 121000 in debt. Um, they're allowing me to pay a rent of 400 bucks a month for the rest of the year for me to get back on my feet. What's okay. the debt, man? Uh, what is the debt of? Yeah. It's uh, $8,000 in credit card, $37,000 in an auto loan, $57,000 on student loans, and $19,000 in a line of credit. What'd you buy with the line of credit and the credit cards? Uh, so the the line of credit was to consolidate my debt from the from my divorce because I got assigned the debt because I made substantially more than her. And then the credit card debt is just debt that I've been carrying for the last probably 10 years. Mm. When was the divorce final? Uh five years ago. Okay. And so you've not done anything about cleaning up the mess from five years ago yet. I, I have not. I have not. And that's why I, okay. my discipline has just been absurd. When did you buy the $37,000 car? So that was actually even worse. What happened was I actually bought a $72,000 car. And within a month, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to afford it. So I took it back to the dealership because my monthly payment was going to be 1400 bucks a month. And I was able to get into another Mercedes that was uh, I could roll that negative equity to, mm-hmm. which was fifty six thousand. And so far, I only owe thirty six thousand. But my monthly payment on the car is eight hundred bucks a month. Mm-hmm. So that you owe thirty seven thousand now, and the car is worth what today? It's probably worth like twenty. Where'd you get that number? Um, just kind of what I've been looking to see if I could resell it and get out of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and your question is how to have financial discipline? Yeah. How can I get my books in a row to be able to pay this off this year while I have the advantage to just live at home? Mm-hmm. I have a girlfriend that I'm pretty serious with that I want to start a life with next year, and she has an eight-year-old kid. So I want to be financially prepared. Right now, I don't know if my debate is should I just save this year to get like $30,000 in savings and then start tackling my debt? Next no, year or no I, think, I think it's time you start to take on this debt. I mean, that's why your parents let you move home. With, yes, the, sole purpose, with the sole purpose of you getting your crap together and getting this mess cleaned up. And they told me this is the last year that they would do that. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you got, you know, and so what you need to do is work all the time. Like more than you so work I, now. I, I Like you make 105000 40 hours a week, right? Yeah, I'm salaried. I can't yeah. get overtime. I didn't ask you to do that. I want you to get another job. Go throw oh. boxes. This isn't. You're not serious about this yet. You don't need a hack, bro. You just need to do it. What is what has kept you from doing this? I get, dude. I get a uh, year after a divorce, man. Those are messy times. You make dumb decisions. You buy a car. You get an apartment. You can't afford. I get that. This five years. You're 35 years old. You're about to enter into another. Till death do us part relationship, this time with a kid. Like, what yeah. what, I, what hack are you looking for, man? I just, I don't know, because I, I have only $2,000 in savings. So okay, I don't so know here, here's, what, here's what I want you to do, all right? Um, y- you have to decide that getting this debt paid off is now a matter of life and death. Because this okay. crap, this misbehavior on your part has stolen your life literally yeah and it's stolen your peace and i want my life back 
and I want my peace back, and I'm willing to do anything to save my life. Like the doctor just walked in and said, you know, you're 100 pounds overweight. You're about to die of a freaking heart attack. You got this, this, and this, and if you don't drop the weight, buddy, you're dead in a year. You know what you would do? You would drop the weight, buddy. Nobody have to talk to you about how to be disciplined. You'd be scared out of your freaking skull, and you'd drop the weight, right? Yeah. So get scared yeah. out of your freaking skull. And quit, you, you no, know, you're, you're hovering around this emotionally as if it's something that is just out there detached from you. Like discipline is going to fly in and light on your shoulder like a bird. It's not. You're going to have to just look up and go, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. I've had it. I'm not living like this anymore. You got to get that thing, that roar coming up from inside of you. And then you don't care what your friends think. And you will work six jobs throwing boxes at night while you make 105 during the day and you'll sell this stupid butt Mercedes. Mercedes should be driven by rich people, not broke people. And so what were you even doing on the lot? That doesn't even make sense. So you got to start talking to yourself like that, okay? And go, no more. I'm not doing this crap anymore. I'm 35 years old. This sucks. And I'm not going to do it anymore. That's where discipline comes from is a healthy level of disgust when the pain of the situation you're in exceeds the pain of change, your butt will change. And until then, it won't. But this pain is an emo- is emotionally manifested, meaning you just decide, I'm sick of this. And until you are, you're just going to wander around in circles, chasing your tail like you've been doing for the last five years. And that's any of us, man. We all do that. You know, I've told the story a thousand times now. It feels like during the Fauci pandemic, I ate every donut in a 50-mile radius. I looked down, and they were hanging on the front of me. And I went, this is ridiculous. A fat man is on the radio talking about discipline. I've got to drop the donuts. And you know what? Hadn't had a donut now since the Fauci pandemic. And I walk or run every morning. This morning I did two miles. Yesterday I did five miles before I came to work as the sun was coming up. Because I decided I wanted to do that more than I wanted to be fat. And so I decided to lose it. And it's a decision. I I got disgusted with myself. Yeah, and I I can't communicate this strongly enough. There's not a there's not a, a five step program to discipline. There's not a super hack. There's not an app. You have to decide. And I'm not 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 next Friday. I'm gonna start start right now. That's when it starts. That's when it starts. And hey, hang on the line. I'm gonna send you Financial Peace University. I wanna send you the videos and you gotta to commit to watching them. And I want it to seep seep in. You're in your parents' house. You're 35. This is your ticket out, brother. But here you, to be disgusted you about. gotta do it. You gotta do it. There's a lot to be disgusted about. So Today. get disgusted. Now. Urgent. Statistics show that half of Americans don't have enough life insurance or they don't have any at all. I don't understand this, John. Why don't people want to take care of their family? They think they're going to die or something? Well, I used to be one of those guys. I didn't even think about it. And one of my buddies said, hey, the only reason to not have life insurance is if you hate your wife and kids. And I immediately went and got term life insurance. That's a gut punch. And oh, you're telling me and for, for decades, Dave, I've sat across people who've lost a spouse. They've lost somebody important to them. Me and too. They don't know what to do next. Me right? too. I mean, you're going to have a crisis here, and you know you got two options while you're sitting and talking to a young widow. She's concerned about how she's going to invest all this money properly and not mess this up, or she's concerned how she's going to eat tomorrow. That's exactly. These are the right. two options. And term, take care of your dadgum family, man. Term life insurance can replace income, pay off debts, cover funeral expenses, so your family can actually have the opportunity to just be sad yeah to just miss you that's exactly what it's supposed to be it's saying i love you to your family term life insurance jeff zander and the team at zander insurance makes it easy and affordable i've used them personally for 25 years they're the only people i trust go to zander.com or call 800-356-4282 
Dr. John Deloney, relationship expert, mental health professional, PhD in counseling, Ramsey Personality is my co-host. Thanks for hanging out with us. So when I was growing up, um, a little redneck kid outside of Nashville in the burbs, these little houses all in a row, had a neighborhood full of kids, and the kids would re, we would run in and out of the house and in and out of the house all day long and leave the door open, and my mother would say classic things like, were you raised in a barn? Like, I know, I was raised in suburbia, but yeah. And so, um, but uh, finally, somewhere in the heat of the summer, and the air conditioning having all spilled out of the house, the heat has now filled the, filled the house, and it filled her head too, and um, her frustration level would reach it. And she would say, that's it. The worm has turned. We had no idea what that meant, except that the beatings were about to begin. And so uh, we would all get scarce real fast and not, no more in and out of the house. We were just out of the house at that point. The worm has, I didn't even know what it meant. I found out later it was Shakespeare. Who knew mom knew Shakespeare? Dude, you know, your mom was a... The worm has turned. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> Except things are about to get ugly. So, yeah, but, you know, that's what happens. This is the secret of how you become disciplined. The worm has turned. That's it. Les Brown, the great motivator, used to say, people change their lives when they finally say, I've had it. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that's... Changing your life is not a... Changing your... Uh, habits, becoming suddenly disciplined in something you weren't, is not an intellectual exercise. It's an emotional, spiritual exercise. Well, and nowadays we have so much access to so many opinions, informed and uninformed. We have uh, uh, countless plans. And so we, we delude ourselves by researching a bunch. If I, like, There's been seasons, Dave, when the time I spent researching the right workout, if I just went down and worked out, it would have been less time than I spent just trying to get the perfect, all right, what's the, what a waste of time, right? So just go do the thing. Yeah, when in doubt. Go do, do the thing. something. Yeah, go do it. Yeah, and, and that changes everything. So some of you listening right now, get out your credit cards right now. Cut them up. Right this second, it's time for plastic surgery. It's time for a plastectomy. And later, you can write it in your journal that it occurred. But freaking do it. Go do it. Or it, it, it text your wife or your husband and say, we need to talk tonight. Text right now. We need to talk tonight. Whatever that. I just cut up your cards. What, so yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to have some. Uh, it's going to be tough this month. But send that text right now. There's no going back. Go do the thing. Yeah. Get up from your desk right now and go for a walk. So go right now. The reason I bring that back up is not to fuss at the last caller. That's not the point. The point is, this is a common thing that is a human condition. John and I suffer from it. All of you suffer from it. How do we go about embracing doing the hard thing to get to the easy? And John, you know, you, you've got a great saying, choose your heart. Oh, by the way, you don't know this. I forgot to tell you. I was going to tell you off air, but I'll just tell you right now. So a, a neighbor of mine came to the event we did with Mike Rowe, mm -hmm. and you went through the whole choose your heart. Okay? You can choose to... Uh, you know, lower your caloric intake and lose some weight, increase your exercise, or choose to be on the operating table for heart surgery uh, from your obesity. Right? Both of those are hard paths. Both are hard. So choose your heart. You said you did a whole talk on that. So my neighbor, who's a good friend of mine, was in the audience. He has lost 150 pounds since that talk. No way. And it's all because of that. Wow. Because of your talk. That's he said, amazing. I, he, he said it, it clicked. It made sense to me. I was with him last night. Wow. Yeah. And he's a great guy. That's incredible. Yeah. He, he was he was big. Yeah. And he has lost a he's lost a backstreet boy. I mean, it's wow. like ridiculous. Yeah, he lost James Childs <laughs> and James' little pet poodle dog he has. That's amazing. James and his dog. Yeah. Wow. But here, I think the illusion is um choose your heart spinning my wheels gets me somewhere yeah my, it it's hard to work extra it's hard to not go out to eat it's hard to stay home from vacation while your friends are going your broke friends are going and spending money they don't have it's hard to 
live on a control budget like a grown-up instead of a child that acts like they live in Congress and they spend whatever they want. It's hard to do. The discipline is hard, but you got to choose your heart because otherwise you're going to be broke. And it's it's and hard. Stay broke. It's hard to be scared when your kids need braces. It's hard being scared when. Uh, I remember when I was broke, broke, broke. Dave, I called my friend and said, "Hey, do you have some money on a credit card? I got to go to the ER, I have something checked out." That was a, a shameful, embarrassing call I made at 26 years old. Like that's hard too, right? So you're not yeah, asking your parents to move back in when, yeah, when you're, you're 35, 35 years old. Yeah, that's hard. Wanting to marry somebody and saying I'm going to be more of a burden to them than not. Like that's hard. So choose which difficult path. It's not like one's easy, one's not. That's exactly right. Yeah. And so the problem is when you don't choose to take the steps to live like no one else so that later you live and give like no one else, you don't choose to do the things that cause you to build wealth, become wealthy. By default, you have chosen mediocrity. By default, you've chosen to retire broke and hope the government will take care of you, which is well known for its ability to handle money. By default, you're going to be working in McDonald's or be a Walmart greeter when you're 68 because you didn't choose the hard earlier. It's just gonna. It, there's just no easy path. Yeah. That that's and, and it, once I get that about something, then it's go time. Then I can go. It's game, game on. Right. And I can flip the switch, and so can you, and so can everybody else. But we all have to consciously, intentionally choose to delay pleasure. And delaying pleasure is emotionally a sign of maturity. It's a sign of emotional and spiritual maturity. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but it yields a harvest of righteousness. Chloe is in Grand Rapids, changing the subject. Hey, Chloe, what's up? Hi, Dave. This is so cool to talk to you. Um, my oh, actually, my baby monitor. Sorry about that. Um, my question: I am um, currently working full time, and my husband is working full time as well. And we have a beautiful little baby girl. She's ten months old. And I was wondering your opinion on whether or not I could basically go part time. Okay. Can you? Need more more details. Yeah. Can you go part time? You I, tell us. Uh, well, I after being on hold for a while, I think I can. Um, but I guess with inflation and the housing market, um, and just the cost of everything going higher and higher, it's a scary jump to make. Um, okay. Can can so here's here's the deal. I mean, mathematically, I'm sure you've thought about this. Can your household operate on your husband's income and your part-time income? Our current household, yes, definitely. Um, however, I mean, we're currently we're in a house that we don't want to be in for the long run. Um, and just looking ahead, I guess maybe I'm coming from more of a place of fear, just watching how the economy is. What do you do? Over. I'm a school psychologist, and my husband what do you is a make? therapist. I make about 62000 full-time. Okay. If you go to part-time for three years oh. and the child uh, is old enough that it starts to, or, or four years, the child goes into kindergarten, whatever, right? And then you went back to full-time yeah, maybe, and you went back to full-time in order to buy a bigger house. I probably want to have a couple kids. Okay. Then, then you're making a choice to either be with the kid or have a bigger house, your choice. Yeah, you gave you gave me the magic word, Chloe, and this is what you would tell your your students, your clients. You you want to work part time, and you want to have a bigger house, and those two well, wants it's not a bigger house or a, a different um, house. I'm totally like, fine with it. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally fine with a small house. It's more just location, a safe location. Well, sure, yeah, sure. It's, and it's not, I'm not making any yeah. sort of judgment. I'm just I'm just repeating your words back. But yeah. here's the deal: you have two competing wants. And you have to sit down and say which one is more important to us. That's it. Right. I mean, and definitely, I, as a mama bear, my kids are my kids and my family are the most important. Sure. Ever. There's not a judgment. There's, not yeah, a there's, wrong no, there's answer. no judgment here. No judgment at all. People who work full time, moms who work full time, are not bad moms by definition, unless they choose to be. And people who stay in the same old, maybe run more run down house, keep for mica cabinets, aren't bad people either. They're just making choices. Yeah. Just which choice? Just consciously realize, but you can't, you can't have both because you're not in Congress. You don't have unlimited funds.
Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day -day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now, you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. John is with us, a different John, in Salt Lake City. Hi, John. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thanks for letting me be on. I really appreciate and feel honored to be on your show. Honored to have you. How can we help? Hey, just wanted to see if a decision I made is reasonable and if there's a way out. I, I wish I would have met you two months ago. Uh, I, I, I hadn't really known about you and what you talk about, which I really agree with. I went and bought a new car about a month and a half ago um, for $54,000. It was taxes and everything was 57. It was a big regret um, because I know what you teach about buying new cars. You shouldn't do it. Um, I'm wondering if it's worth it. It's got 1,800 miles on it. I can only sell it now for about 48,000. Um, so it's taken that big of a hit immediately. And if, if it's better to take that hit and try to buy a used car, or should I just stick this out, learn from my mistake, what would you recommend on that? Did you pay cash? Yes. Okay. And what's your net worth? Um, about one, one million. Okay. Well, we tell folks not to buy a new car unless you have at least a million dollar net worth. So you didn't violate that. Um, and what's your household income? Um, about one hundred and twenty-five. Okay. Thousand. All right. Are you married? Yes. What's her car? Married. What's her car worth? That was her car. Huh. What's well, a good good man? <laughs> well played. Smart man. You know the federal law. Wife gets the good car. All right. And so, uh, yeah. And what are you driving? What's yours worth? Mine's worth probably fifteen thousand. Atta boy. There You're you gonna go. be married a long time, John. Okay. So John, the yeah. rule of the rule of thumb we use on a paid for vehicle is don't buy new unless you have at least a million dollar net worth. You did not violate that because you're going to lose $10,000 in 20 minutes and you need to be able to absorb that blow, which is exactly what happened to you. Okay. And, but $10,000 doesn't put you into the street homeless. It does someone that makes 50 K and has no money, but you have a million dollar net worth. You make 125,000. The other rule of thumb is don't buy things with motors and wheels all combined in your life because they all go down in value that equal more than about half your annual income. And you haven't violated that. You're right on the bubble though. Yeah. Okay. So there's nothing in the guidelines that, and the, those guidelines are simply there to say, don't put too much money in things that are going down in value and expect to build wealth. That's what that means. Okay. And too much money is a ratio. So, you know, like I've got a friend that makes 15 million a year and he drove up in front of my house in a $400,000 car the other day. Well, it, you know, that's nothing to him, but it's, it's obviously a, lot and it, it's obviously going to go down in value faster than yours did and so uh because they four hundred thousand doesn't go up either they go down too so uh you know but he's he's no 
dumber than you are or I am or, you know, anybody else because of that, because of the ratio of 15 million to 400 is a lot smaller. It's like someone buying a $4,000 car that makes 150,000 a year. That's his ratio. So his ratio is excellent um, in that regard. But anyway, so that, that whole idea is to just keep people from doing this. So I, I wouldn't shame you on this at all. I mean, I, the only thing, the only shame I would have, you know, you went through this whole thing. I wish I'd met you too. Well, I might have told you to buy the car if you called me and hadn't bought it because I think you can afford it. You pay cash for it. You've got a million dollar net worth. The total of your vehicles is not more than half your annual income. Or it's right around it, but it's not, it's not killing you. It's not, you know, you're not over in the stupid column. You know, that kind of stuff. So I think you keep and enjoy it and don't shame over it. Yeah. You know, I, I despise the car, but she loves it. But I don't know. I don't know. Why do you despise you know? it? Did you despise it before you bought it or because of this discussion? Um, one is because, um, uh, you know, the, it's right on the bubble of whether you buy new or not, but it's just a car that it has a reflection on the windshield. She drives it mostly, but it's just, it's just not, not a car that I would buy in it. And, you know, you teach about the, being together in the marriage on financial decisions that you'd be together on, on even the purchase of a car, right? Even though she drives it mostly. Yeah, right, but, but hold on. You're you're putting you're upset with her, and you're putting all this onto that car. Y'all need to have this conversation because you you hate this car, and maybe it wasn't a car you would have bought. But you're more frustrated that you feel like you lost, or that y'all that she overrode you. Like y'all, there's some yeah, sort of but relationship. I'm, I'm being together, it doesn't mean you both have to love something before you buy it. I mean, I'm building a house right now, and my wife and the decorator picked a light fixture for one of the rooms. I hate the light fixture, but I don't really care. It's a light fixture, and it's I care a lot more that Sharon is, is going to enjoy it, and it's SWI. Sharon wants it, which is one of the <laughs> it's one of the rules in our house, right? And so I, I acquiesce on that. I don't have to be completely aligned on every single thing, and I won't walk into that room and hate the light fixture. It will disappear because light fixtures do disappear once you buy them. You put them up, and no one sees them again. You, you don't, people don't walk around and go, oh, there's a light fixture. And people don't do it. So, and, and that includes me. And so I will be fine. I will forget the stupid thing is there after I've lived in the house 20 minutes. And so move on. And so you don't drive this car just because you don't like the car. You know, don't, don't go through all these financial gyrations to go, I got, oh, now I got her. Now I got a way to get this car sold. No, 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 no. Yeah. Y'all sit down and have that hard conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But when we say you should be aligned on your money, it doesn't mean you both have to enjoy and every exact thing exactly the same way. Now, if someone is completely diametrically opposed to something for a good reason, we don't do it. You know, one of us, you know, when in doubt, we don't. One of us is standing up and we're just going, no, cannot do that. It's awful. I can't stand it. We're not doing it. And then, then that's what that's being aligned. But you know, you buy something that you really love, and I really don't care for, but I care that you were going to enjoy it. Then I can do that. That's aligned too. Exactly. It's like uh, my wife and I are aligned on concerts. The one I'm going to tonight, <laughs> she has no interest in going to. So I'm going with. She's very with aligned about Pete. that. That's yeah. right. So we're very aligned on the thing, but yeah, not not the actual. So you're music. going with James. No, James is going to be at home. Even I have standards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be writing sad poetry about his dad in the corner. <laughs> ben is in Detroit. Hey, Ben, welcome to the Ramsey Show. How you doing? Good. How can we help? Yeah, I was just uh, calling. Uh, my main question is if uh, I'm trying to get my monthly expenses down in any way possible. Um, I only make like 40, last year was like 40 to 50 K a year. And I'm trying to see if I only got like seven or eight grand in my retirement. Um, I pulled out over the years quite a bit and to, because of, uh, not too great decisions. And Ben, what's I'm your question? That, I'm just trying to see like, should I take the rest out just to pay off my, uh, no, <laughs> no, yeah, don't do that. Here, here's why. How much is in your 401k? 7,000? 
Yeah. Okay. If you pull seven thousand out of your four hundred one k and you're not fifty nine and a half, you get charged a ten percent penalty for pulling it out early, plus your tax rate. What do you make a year? I only make like last year forty three. Okay, so you're in twenty five percent tax bracket. So you're going to get charged twenty five percent plus you're going to get charged a ten percent penalty. That's thirty five percent. It's like saying, Dave, I want to borrow money at thirty five percent interest and pay off my debt. No, that would be silly. Mathematically, you would never go and give the government a third of your money in order to get access to it, unless unless the house was burning down, unless it was in foreclosure or something. So no, you don't do that. You take an extra job, you get on a tight budget, and you clean this mess up. You can quit spending every Friday night out doing something else. Go to work. That's how you clean the mess up, Ben. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Every Dollar is our world-class budgeting app that helps you manage money the Ramsey way. Every Dollar simply works wherever you are. iOS, Android, online with your desktop. Start Every Dollar for free and immediately see where you stand with your money. You'll get organized. You can personalize your budget, of course. Stop overspending and new to every dollar, we'll show you a long term financial roadmap. Track your net worth, debt free date, retirement date, baby steps, progress, and even more. We're going to help you work the plan, and every dollar does it. We'll proactively coach you to build wealth and reach your goals. Download the free app for iOS or Android, or go to everydollar.com and get started on your desktop, however you want to do it. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, by the way, guys, if you want to help us out, we could use your help. Click the subscribe button or the follow button wherever you're uh, doing this, whether it's YouTube or a podcast or whatever. And, of course, share the link or click the share button. Let people know about it. Leave a nice five-star review. Tell people about us. When you do that, it changes everything in the algorithms. It moves this show along. And we're amazed at our rankings on Apple, on YouTube, our rankings on um, Spotify are fabulous. And it's all because of you guys sharing it and talking about it and following and subscribing and all those good things. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you. Megan is in Salt Lake City, Utah. Hi, Megan. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So my husband and I and our two kids are feeling forced out of our house because of 
a legal situation with our HOA where our HOA will be doubling in cost. And if we sell our house, we're wondering if we should use the equity to pay off our remaining debts or if we should put it all towards a new down payment since the interest rate is much higher now than when we originally bought. Wow. What is your HOA fee now? 400 and it's going to 800 probably 750 wow probably but hasn't happened yet nope so who sued the hoa um, basically the hoa sued the construction company because some of the townhomes in our neighborhood have major damage but the hoa just lost and so now they are responsible for um, repairing the foundations and roofs of the damaged homes. Wow. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you, they sued the construction company to get the construction company to fix the things. I don't understand, because um, HOA usually doesn't cover, oh, this is a condo. It's not, yeah, it's it's not a, these, aren't, these aren't standalone homes. Mm -hmm, okay that's what's going on okay all right what a mess um so how much equity do you have um so probably about a hundred and twenty thousand before your values go down once word gets out about the hoa fee going up and yeah so right so, now right now mm -hmm. it's worth a hundred but once word gets out on this you're you're probably going to lose some value um correct the uh thinking of selling it now mm -hmm. um we have to disclose it of course but we might have a better chance now yeah because there may be a bunch of other people going on the market too the market might be flooded um yeah i'd sell it I i'm with you on that and you got a hundred thousand or so in equity how much debt do you have we have fifty thousand dollars in debt okay so if you buy a house with fifty thousand dollars down and you have zero debt what's wrong with that well, since now I talked to a lender and we qualify for about a six and a half interest rate. Um, when we bought, we had interest rate. That hasn't got anything to do. The interest rate hasn't got well, anything to do. You're moving. So you're either I'm renting or you're that. buying. You're either you're moving. You're either renting or you're buying. So your old interest rate doesn't matter. It's gone. You sold it. Okay. You're going to yeah. buy. If you're going to buy, it's going to be at these current interest rates. Yeah, I that's guess not going to change. Is, but whether or not we put a bigger down payment will change, like, what type of house we could get and what our monthly payment for that house would be. So we're just well, not sure what the wisest way to use that money is. Yeah, well, your interest rate on your mortgage is going to be less than the interest rate on all your other debt, even though it's higher than the current mortgage. So mathematically, you come out better by paying off the debt and putting a smaller okay. down payment down. You'll come out with a lower monthly drain by having an increased house payment. And uh, so, yeah. And, yeah, the, the, the reality of this is is that you're – but, yeah, I would pay off the debt and, and buy whatever house you can afford at that point with the $50,000 down. And, and listen, I – Megan, I got a feeling this has been stewing and running around. Like, you, you guys have been dealing with the – unknown and the stress of this whole situation for quite some time and i'm going to encourage you to list your house by friday no more wringing your hands no more worrying no more wondering make a decision your anxiety level will drop immediately but you guys have been kind of hanging up here in this in this constant level of angst for a long time over this issue and now you've you've come to the conclusion it's coming so act on it and you will see your angst drop do you agree with that yeah and, and uh clarify what you were saying so let's say she had a 2.9 percent interest rate now it's going to be six and a half so maybe her monthly payment i'm making up numbers here was two thousand dollars a month and it's going to go to th uh, again making it up three thousand dollars a no, month no it's not that much well but what you're saying is so yeah it's, it's, $2,700. What you're saying is yeah. paying off all the debt, all the car notes, everything, you're going to end up paying off $1,000 a monthly yeah. stuff coming out of your house. Yeah. And here's the thing. $50,000 at an extra 3%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3.5%, 3
3 versus 6, right? $50,000 that you don't have because you paid off debt at an extra 3%. 3 times 5 is $1,500 a year. Hmm. This whole discussion is over 100 bucks a month. Yeah. Difference. Yeah. That's it. So she puts down another 50K, saves her 100 bucks a month on the payment. That's it. Hmm. So it, it's, it's just the math is, is bogus. There's no, there's nothing here. Nothing's happening here. But there's it's just so, so the numbers much are so smoke small. and fire about that interest rate. Yeah. But it's like, oh, God, interest is higher. Yeah. It's, it's 100 bucks a month in your situation because you paid off your debt instead of putting down an extra 50. That's what it changed it. And so zippy. You know, I mean, in, in the scope of your life, that's not the problem you got. You got a lot of bigger problems. Get this house listed. So, John, talk about the idea that when there is uh, that the unknown or the sitting on the fence on an unmade decision is more stressful than a hard made decision. Yeah, I, I think it goes back to that illusion that we we sold people for 150 years that mental health was getting all the right thoughts in the right order. And when you have a situation like this, It'll never get in the right order. They just swirl and swirl and swirl. And so what do we do? We think, we ask more, we read another book, we go. And so instead of just doing the stupid thing, you have to act your way. Oh, and and uh, by the way, unfollow or defriend the HOA Facebook group. <laughs> that's the other. Quit talking about it. Because that's where hell lives, <laughs> is in HOA Facebook groups. The devil, he, that's where he takes up resident. It's a portal straight into hell. If a bus is coming right at you, and the, the lights get real bright, and all of a sudden everything goes dark, and you open your eyes, and you're staring at a Facebook portal for an HOA group. You didn't get in. Right? You didn't get in. You didn't make it. You didn't make it. I don't, man, and people live on them. People live oh, on them. Oh, the, they're wrong people. That's what I'm saying. So, And when stuff like this is going on, when a negative situation in the neighborhood, it's like, oh, it just goes bananas. It's gasoline on a it's fire. Like, it's oh. just like, woo, woo. Put the yeah. house up. Unfollow, My defriend. Felicia. Get out. Get away from that stuff and put your house on the market and sell it and get out of Dodge now. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, PhD in counseling, best-selling author, host of the uh, best uh, best listened to Ramsey Network show. I can't even get it out. It's, <laughs> it's called so the Doctor. Great. It's, it's just it. amazing. The Dr. John Deloney Show. The numbers are ridiculously up on that show hockey sticking up into the right so thank you guys for listening to his show and this one we appreciate you joining us open phones here at 888-825-5225 Demari starts off this hour in miami hey Demari, how are you hi dave good and you good better than i deserve what's up so i've been watching since 2019 and you've helped me get out of debt many times but I I've helped you get out of debt many times. Many times. Yeah, I had issues with credit cards, but I've paid them off for the most part. Um, but the issue I have is that I got home two weeks ago from work, and there was a pack in front of my door, and I'm being sued by Calvary for an old credit card I had back in 2020 from Citibank. Um, but it doesn't say I'm being sued. It says I have to be in person for a pretrial conference by a judge. So my question is, should I go? What are the steps? Like, what's the process if I do go? Um, How much do you owe them? Um, that card was for $7,688. Okay. And why has it not been paid? 
This was during COVID, so my husband had lost his job because they couldn't afford him. Cause he was that was four hire, years and ago. Why has it not been paid? Um, I had let it go into collection back in 2020, so I just haven't paid it. And so what do you all make? What? what? I'm sorry? What, what's your household income? Right now, I get paid 43K, and he gets paid 39K. Okay, so you make $80,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And you figured out that not paying something and ignoring it doesn't work because it has a high rate of resurrection, right? Yeah. Yeah, it comes back. The zombies, the mm -hmm. zombies are here. Yep, it does. Okay. How many others are like that? Um, This is the only one in collection because this was the only no, one no, I no, 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 no. How many other debts have you forgotten and have not dealt with for years? There was another one from a Walmart credit card that a portfolio bought, but they haven't sent me anything. Okay. How much is it? That was 5400 around there. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you have no money. I mean, I have money saved. How much? But I don't, 1000 Okay. That's all. You keep yeah. saying I. Is your husband around? Does he have any money? Y'all stuff separated? No. We save money together. <laughs> okay, so together, yeah, that's all we have. together, all you could scrape together is a thousand dollars right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. I am and not I an I'm, I'm not an expert on Florida law. A pretrial mm -hmm. conference on a seven thousand dollar credit card is highly unusual. I've been doing this thirty mm -hmm. years, and I've never heard of that. So this mm -hmm. is a new tactic of some kind that the collections attorney is using. What what is the yeah. date on the pretrial conference? Um, June tenth at one p.m. Okay, all right. Uh, if that occurred with me, what I would do is call the attorney that is suing you and mm -hmm. start negotiating a payment plan or a settlement. Okay. Do you have anything that you could mm -hmm. sell? Because if you come up with about three thousand dollars and offer it to them as settlement in full, they'll take it because they figure you're a deadbeat because you hadn't bothered to pay in five years. Yeah, I mean I don't have anything to sell, and I have my. How fast can you scratch up three thousand dollars? Mm. Like real fast. Mm. Like don't do anything. Mm. Go crazy. Go work six jobs for the next two weeks. Both of you go nuts and get some money really, really fast to get this off your back mm -hmm. before June 10th gets here. I mean, we could do DoorDash on the side. There you go. In the morning, mm -hmm. and then you work all day, and then you do it until your eyes are drooping in the evening. You yeah. go to bed for a few hours, you do it again. Yeah, he's not kidding. Yeah. Because otherwise well, yeah. you're about to I get your back. Listen, here's what happens. Court. In general, when you go to court on a situation mm -hmm. like this, here's what happens. 100% of the time you lose. Yeah. Because you don't really have an argument here. You signed a contract mm -hmm. that says, I am going to pay $7,600. You violated the contract. You're in default. Done. Mm -hmm. Guilty. Yeah. Okay? And so you, there's no argument. It's just like, I don't have any money. I don't have any money. It's not an argument. And if they add attorney's mm -hmm. fees on top of this or some kind of court fees, you're going to end up walking out owing more than that, potentially. Yeah. And so, but, right. and so they're, you're going to lose, whether you go to pretrial, whether you don't, whether you settle or whether you don't. So you might as well work mm -hmm. your butt off right now and get this done before and let this be the catalyst June 10th. You know, I got to get this solved before June 10th. And so call the attorney and say, if I mm -hmm. give you $3,000 before June 10th, can we call this settled in full? And he's going to say, oh, no. And you say, oh, yes. And he's going to say, oh, no. And you say, oh, yes. And you argue about it until you settle yep. on a number, right? Yeah. And then you go get that number before June 10th as settled in full and get a written release in writing from him mm -hmm. or her uh, to call this case closed. And if I never get that letter before June 10th, do I still show up or do I not go? You get the letter and you give the guy mm -hmm. the money. You settle this. You take care of this. It's time for you to proactively take care of something instead of letting everything happen to you by trying to ignore it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so, you know, if you want to go to a pretrial conference, you can go. But all the judge is going to do is go, boom, you're done. It's going to take about 30 seconds before you're done. Because, there's, you know, there's no – they didn't do anything wrong. You're the only one that did something wrong. You just didn't pay the bill.
and so they're going to get you. It's that simple. And then they're going to take a, an, they're, you know, they're going to take a judgment lien for whatever the amount of money is. And then the, if Florida allows it, and I guess Florida does, they're going to garnish your wages, and then they're going to attach, put liens on your house and whatever else. So you better go get some dadgum money together and do a lump sum settlement. Boom, three thousand, four thousand, twenty five hundred, somewhere in there, and settle this five year old seven thousand six hundred dollar debt, and settled in full in writing before June 10th and just become a nuisance to this attorney until they do the deal with you and then become a nuisance to yourself until you scratch together the money and get this done. So John, in 30 years of doing this, one of the things that I see most often is if you take care of something when it's a problem, instead of ignoring it for five years or 10 years or 20 months or whatever it is, the level of problem it would she could have cleared this up five years ago by busting her butt in the middle of the fauci pandemic there was stuff people were doing in florida florida was open and you know there's a lot of stuff you could have done taking care of it then but now five years later we're still talking about this well my husband lost his job well freaking five years ago if you take care of it back then you got one tenth the problem it, it, you magnify your problem by ignoring it 10x minimum Whatever the problem is, an old landlord dispute, whatever it is, you cannot ignore this crap. You got to take it to ground. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey guys, you know this, but I'll say it anyway. College is freaking expensive, and student loans are out of control. The average private student loan debt in 2023 was $55,000. So if you're in over your head with private student loan debt, don't beat yourself up. Look, we've all made mistakes with money in the past. What matters is doing something about it now. So if you're in distress with private student loans, that's private, not federal student loans, call Y-Refi. Y-Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. To learn more about this custom refinancing option, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. This is a show about you, America. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Well, it's tax time, so folks got questions about taxes. Um, the only question I can't help you with is how to deal with your rage, because I haven't been able to figure out a way to deal with mine. So my poor tax guy, he has to bring me bad news every year. And the bad news is, is that I pay our ridiculous government, a ridiculous amount of money. And what do I get for it? Anger. <laughs> no, you get ridiculousness. It Ridic works out. Oh, I bought it. Yeah, That's right. Bought I bought and paid for it. That's it. There you go. Hey, question of the day for taxes. What's the difference between a tax deduction and a tax credit? A tax credit 100% applies to your tax bill. So a $1,000 tax credit reduces your tax bill by $1,000. Tax credit, much better than tax deduction. 3X better. Because if you take a $1,000 tax deduction, that means you lower the income that is being taxed by $1,000. And so if you're in a 30% tax bracket, it actually saves you $300 on taxes. So a tax deduction is worth a quarter on the dollar, roughly. A tax credit is worth a dollar for a dollar. And that's the big difference you're looking at. So 
If you're confident about filing on your own because you got a simple return, you can go to RamseySolutions.com slash tax and get our Ramsey Smart Tax software. It's very inexpensive to use, and we won't try to sell you a bunch of crap like Turbo, TurboTax does. They're awful. Did I, did I say that out loud? I just did. Yeah, okay, because it's true. If you've got a complicated return, go to RamseySolutions.com slash tax and click on the ELP, the Endorsed Local Provider an individual person in your area that has the heart of a teacher that will help you do your complicated return. The fees are obviously more to do that, but you get a very personalized experience and you don't need to do that. If you've got a simple return, if you're just doing a 1040 easy, don't pay somebody 400 bucks to do that. That's silly. Okay. But get, but but for sure, you know, spend 20 or 30 bucks on some software, right? That's the deal. So RamseySolutions.com for Ramsey Smart Tax or for the ELP in your area. Katie's in Springfield, Michigan. Hi, Katie. How are you? Good. Good. How can we help? So my husband and I have been kind of stuck on baby step three for a very long time now. Um, he, only makes like 40, so well, he just got a raise. So now he's making 45,000, but we have a child. Well, we have six kids, but one with severe special needs, um, severe autism. And we are just busy with him all the time. And I can't, I used to do daycare in the house to help out and things like that. And I can't do that now. I can't go get a job. My husband wants to be home more to help me with the kids since it is a high stress situation. So we just, we're having a hard time ever making enough to get anywhere. And right now we're on Medicaid and food stamps. And as soon as we make a little bit more, then we lose those. And then we, you know, we're kind of just stuck the same spot all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think the solution is? I, I mean, I feel like we have to find a way for him to make a higher, get a higher paying job, but in our area, he's, you know, been stuck trying to find something and mostly everything like requiring him to travel or, you know, just working second job, which then leaves me with no help with our six kids. Mm -hmm. So I just, I don't know. Like he feels like we just keep going on welfare for the next couple of years until we get, you know, I had been homeschooling, but because of the special needs and trying to work with him, most of my kids are in public school right now, except for him and the baby. Um, and my teenager who homeschools, but um, the others are all in school. So he's like, well, if we can just wait long enough for the baby to get in school, then maybe you can get a job working at the school or something. And, but yeah. I'm like, do we really want so to be on what, welfare what does, for uh, what three he, years? What's he do for a living? So he is a, like a service technician. He works on like coffee makers and things, travels around and fixes mm-hmm. them and installs them. And mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And how old is he? 48. Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a lot going on. I'm sorry, man. I mean, you, the, you, you're a warrior girl. I'm proud of you. Uh, and you, you're carrying a tremendous burden and, um, but so the answer, you're, you're right. The answer to the equation is income. And, um, yeah. how do we get income up? Um, well, we have to have some aspirations, to do something other than welfare. And so we have to say, okay, what do I want to be doing 10 years from today that makes $100,000 a year? The average household income in America is 43,000. I'm sorry, you you make 43, is 73,000. Okay. So by definition, not by shame, but by definition, you are in a lower income household with six kids. That's okay. that's a, like a factual statement, not an emotional statement. Okay, and so yeah. how do we fix that? Well, obviously we change the income because we're not going to change the number of kids, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that so I, you know this amounts to career counseling for him. This says, okay, what is it you can do? What is it? What classes do you need to take? What tools do you need to put in your belt? so that you are worth $100,000 a year 10 years from now. And the path between 43 and 100 is not a singular jump. It's a progressive jump. And so the income will be going up consistently every year, year over year, as he moves through the apprenticeship or as he moves through the training or he finishes that, deg- that two-year degree at the community college or whatever it is. 
but he's going to have to figure out what he wants to be and what it takes to be one of those and then get about the business of doing that. Sitting there doing nothing, fixing coffee makers is killing your family. Yeah. It's hard. The stress is in your voice, and I don't blame you. And he's not doing anything wrong. He's not a bad guy. He just doesn't know what to do. So I'm telling him what to do. Yeah. What he needs to do is he needs to set a very clearly defined goal to do something that he actually does enjoy and has the capability to do with maybe some training or maybe some classes or a certification. I don't care what it is, but um, you can go to six months of code school while working full time and make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. Writing yeah, code, writing code. Being an electrician, but it was a lot of internship type mm -hmm. stuff and not making much the whole time. And well, guess what? So then he's like, well, do I take less for a while and make more later? Yeah, or maybe, or maybe, I'm, you know, maybe we do something, but what we have to do is lay that down. And it's not just, I want more money. It's, I want more money doing something. I'm going to have some level of joy doing. Yeah. Okay. And so I don't want you to just sign up for something you hate for the next 10 years to make more money. That's not the issue. But the end of the equation is, yeah, there's going to be more money at the end of that rainbow. And so we need to really clearly define and set some goals because the problem, the, the problem is not that the hard, things are hard. The problem is that things are hard and we don't see how they're going to get better. Yeah. That's what, that's what makes it triple hard. And so when I, I can go through hard if I see my way to better. And you can too. This is a strange glitch in the matrix, Dave. I, if a friend of mine called me and said he's in the same situation, the first thing I would, I'd probably get pretty loud and say, "Dude, I don't give a crap what you're doing. You got to go to work." Maybe I'm being, I'm, I'm too harsh, but man, I, I'm trying to put myself in this situation and listening to Katie's voice. I hear a mom who's drowning, and a husband who's like, "Ah, eh, we're good." And may, maybe I'm too, uh, I'm getting callous in my old age, but well, man, I. He, he doesn't see a path. Okay. And that's what he needs a path, and Katie needs a path. And that's, you know, I agree. That, that, and then, and then if he won't get up, I'm going to put my foot on his butt. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. So, yeah. Okay. So, Katie, I'm going to send you Ken Coleman's career assessment for your husband to take. And I'm going to send you his book, From Paycheck to Purpose. I want him to read that book in the next three days. And I want him to take the, that uh, assessment tonight when he gets home. Because we're going to send it to you by email right now. It's a link. And he's going to start discovering what he's going to be when he grows up. Your home is probably the biggest purchase you'll ever make. And with the real estate market like it is now, you'll need a mortgage company you can trust. That's Churchill Mortgage. You guys, buying a home is not a button push. It's a process. It takes building a relationship with an expert who will dig into the details and give you peace of mind without busting your budget. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country. And they're Ramsey Trusted, because they do what's right for you. Go to churchillmortgage.com to get started. John Deloney Ramsey personality is our co-host today. Today's question comes from Patrick in Minnesota. Patrick writes, my wife and I are in our early 60s. We have no debt and a net worth of $2 million. Both of us are retiring in the next nine months, and our biggest issue is the expectation of our children and their families for support. We've been taking them on annual vacations for a long time. We give them money when needed, basically supporting their family at our expense. We've been blessed due to hard work, planning for the future, and making sacrifices along the way. Is it okay to cut the cord so we can enjoy our retirement and not have to worry about their lack of budgeting? 
No, Patrick, I'm sorry. You got to keep paying for everything for them forever. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even say a straight face. I tried. <laughs> yes, Patrick, you should have cut it a long time ago. A long, long time ago. Yes, it's time. It's time. Have a big family meeting. Don't just uh, ghost your kids. Um, have a big family meeting and say, Mom and I are no longer um, paying your bills. We're retiring. We're on a limited. Now we're on a fixed income. And uh, it's time for y'all to grow up. Yeah. Sorry. I bet as he typed this. Sorry, not sorry. He was, he got upset. You know what? But he's not the problem. No. She is. <laughs> he, he's trying to get us to give him permission to tell his wife that she has to quit being an enabler. Ah. What you on bet? I wouldn't take that bet. <laughs> I won't take that bet. Because <laughs> this guy, the way he worded this, he's so pissed he can't breathe. <laughs> I was so, saying, man, um, you can feel it through yeah. the tip. Is it okay if I cut them off? <laughs> it's like so we, <laughs> so we can enjoy it's, our it's, life and not I worry about enjoy their, my life again. Their, but the kids on a budget. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like yeah, yeah. You've been wanting to do this a long time, Patrick. It's overdue, and yeah. so yeah, you have to tell your wife and your kids that we're not sending them any more money. And here, here's a way to do this, Patrick. And no, she can't sneak and do it either. Right. Here's a way I think you can do this. Um, uh, I had someone that, that I care about call me a few years ago and say, hey, I'm retiring. And I paused and said, can you afford to do that? And that question had never entered that person's mind. It was like Michael Scott declaring bankruptcy. Like, I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> that's, like, that's not how it works. not how that works. And so maybe sitting down and saying, hey, we're going to retire in nine months. Let's... Let's see what this is. What our life's going to look like. How much money we're going to have for things, and maybe the math will help your argument. Probably not, but maybe it will help you create a world where this is what our world is going to look like. This is what we're going to have, and this not. This is have. the discussion with your wife, sir. Exactly. Not with your kids. With your kids, the answer is just no. Yeah. Just go ahead and send out thing. Hey, we're retiring, and that means so is our sending you money. It's retiring too. Not happening anymore. Done. And love you want to see you all the time come over if you're really really hungry call we'll make dinner but short of that we're, that's it i mean you you be on your own and, well your grandchildren my grandchildren are gonna be fine and you're gonna be fine too people have done this for generations like stood on their own two feet and stuff and now you guys get the opportunity to do it it's a pretty cool thing so yeah it's good a, job dave i didn't even see that through the through, through the lines but i think you're right yeah i mean he's Thoroughly done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amanda's in Milwaukee. Hey, Amanda, how are you? I am okay. How are you doing? Better than we deserve. What's up? Uh, thanks for taking my call. So my husband and I are looking at many potential house repairs that if they go, it's going to be a problem. We have a furnace that's 20 years old that may seize up because it's slowly leaking oil. We have a water heater that's leaking that might go. We have a chimney that's potentially leaking into our roof. And we have a sewer lateral that is made out of clay and it's it's leaking and causing backups. Um, we also have $55,000 in debt and we want to focus on the debt, but we're staring down all these potential repairs and a potential surgery for me down the road. And we're not sure how to approach it all. Hmm. What's your household income? About eighty-six thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how, what's the fifty-five thousand in debt? What kind of debt is it? Thirty-five thousand in student loans, five thousand in medical bills, and then fourteen thousand in a loan that we took out to repair windows because that was leaking into the wall, causing mold. Hmm. Boy, your house is a piece of crap. <laughs> It was built in 1912. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you watched too much HGTV, didn't you? They they built they don't build them like they used to. Thank God. It's gonna be so fun. Yeah. We can fix it up. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Clay, okay, can I, clay can I, sewer I, lines. My husband's been here clay for so, 10 years. Sewer lines, and and boilers that leak, and water heaters Our that pets leak. Pets' heads are falling off. Hey, listen. When I was, um, why don't you sell it? Yeah. Well, that's what my husband and I talked about. And we were thinking we could sell it and then use that money to pay off debt. We yeah. were wondering what your uh, what your 
opinion is on, well, in order to sell it and actually get money for it, we have to fix all this stuff. No. And so we were wondering no, you what... No, you know. You don't? No. You just sell it. Well... You have to disclose that the stuff's get, like, They're going to find that. I mean, a home inspector is going to find these issues, but... And you disclose them if you have known issues as a seller anyway, but and so it may lower the value, but it doesn't keep you from selling it. Right, right. The things are all still um, functioning. They're just are they're just on their last leg. Right. Yeah. We were thinking though to increase the value in order to fix it is it, a cash out it, broke, refinance. Broke people don't do refinances. No, don't do a cash out. Don't. No, 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 no. Because then you're putting what's the, the last two legs of your house on the block. Why don't you just put a sign in the yard and sell it and move? Okay. I think your life would be better. And then we were thinking we could rent until we pay off the debt, but rent is way more expensive than our mortgage. Our mortgage is like seven eighty a month. Your mortgage is seven eighty a month plus a hundred thousand dollars in repairs. <laughs> yeah. Renting. Is not a hundred thousand dollars, right? That you don't have. And so, Amanda, can I ask you and, a and guess what? question? If the, guess what? If the water heater leaks when you're renting, you call the landlord and he fixes it. <laughs> it's the coolest yeah. thing. Amanda, are you struggling with with anxiety? Yes. Yes. Here's how I know. And so is my husband. I, I yes, I can tell, and I know that because I've been you. And when you get anxious. You start forecasting all of the potential calamities coming your way, and they feel as though they're happening right now. Well, that's the other thing. My question to my husband was, do we need to fix this? Because these are all potential things. We're getting people you don't to need look to fix, at them and You don't need us. to fix them today if you stay, but I wouldn't stay. Okay. I think the quality of your life is going to go up considerably when you move. And I think there's something else going on underneath this. Is your marriage okay? Yes, it is. Okay. But we have a lot of um, um, outside family stress. Yes. My family. Can almost guarantee it. And you start grasping for every shred of control you have in your life. And when you're anxious, it spins out and you can't grasp any of it. And it all feels like it's piling on you at the same time. And listen to me and Dave, yep. it's not. You can stop this particular top from spinning by putting a, a, a sign in the yard tomorrow. Or you can look at each other and make a checklist and say, all right, nothing's broken yet. And we'll have to deal with this someday. We love this house. We love this location. We're going to knock this debt out. Yeah. But I really didn't hear that. I didn't hear we love this house. I, it's it's I, not our forever home. We hope well, to grow our well, you know, there's not, no room. Your forever home's heaven. There's not a forever home. Yeah. So no, nobody has a forever home. This idea that you're going to live in a house forever is just dumb. Nobody does. Everybody moves. I mean, really. The number of people that live in a house 60 or 70 years is almost zero. The average house flips every 5.6 years in America. So, yeah. No. Hang on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of Building an Unanxious Life as my gift. I want you all to read it together. Yeah. You all go through it together. I think there's bigger things going on that that's, y'all are focusing on this one thing and it's all coming down. It's not. It's not. It's yeah. a problem to be fixed, but it's not all coming down. I would leave. That's what I would do. Jump online at RamseySolutions.com. Get one of our real estate endorsed local providers that are Ramsey trusted and get the thing listed by the weekend. That's what I would do. Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost sharing ministry, but listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses. But we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Building a non-anxious life. The book is the number one bestseller that he just gave away. And, uh, John, in that, you one of the things you talk about, the what, four or five things that we have to do, right? Uh, six. Six daily choices, okay. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but it's... Uh, it, it's I could hear that or in that last caller's voice is every time you provide a solution, it, it doesn't solve the problem. It actually opens up a portal to a whole bunch of other problems. And when you try to solve anxiety that way or just a, a whole bunch of problems or even just a lot of stress, you end up playing whack-a-mole. And you just hit a problem and two more shoot up and you hit another one and three more shoot up. And so really the book is about go all quit playing that quit playing whack-a-mole, put the little hammer down and go back over there and solve these other bigger issues. And she alluded to it in the call, just asking, Hey, is everything else okay? No, it's not. Like there's a lot of stuff falling apart. And the beautiful thing about our bodies is man, it'll try to get our attention and let us know things aren't okay. And if you don't if you don't listen to those alarms, man, they'll start ringing real loud and you'll think everything's falling apart on you when it's really not. Yeah. So within the six daily choices, I mean, let's talk about a couple of those. Like the first one is choose reality, right? You got to know, you got to know the starting line of the marathon you're about to run. And in her case, choosing reality, this house is not falling apart. This house is old. It's got some challenges. Um, what is true is y'all owe $50,000. Let's get that knocked out because that's keeping you awake at night. Um, the second one, like another one is choose freedom. They don't get to make choices that they want to make because they owe $50,000, right? So the, the quicker we can unhook from other people telling us how we're going to live our lives and what we're going to do, um, then bankers. your body goes, bankers. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Unhook from the bankers. Yeah. yeah. And get some, if your family's falling apart, your family's a place that causes you a lot of pain and stress, then get a group of people in your life. Get a good church. Get some, some ride or dies. And, and, your s- body and will set go, some boundaries oh. with the crazy. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's dealing with these things way up river so that your body doesn't have to spend its time trying to get your attention all the time. Yeah. And there's, uh, something else that shows up too. And, and it's, I kind of, I kind of hit it pretty hard there, but it's the, um, everything feels like it's forever. Mm-hmm. This is not our forever home, but it feels like it's forever. And so it's just a stupid house. There's a stupid house on every corner. Get you another stupid house and rent somebody else's stupid house until you can get a better deal on a stupid house. It's a stupid house. They're everywhere. And if you, if you think about it that way, it just less, it takes all the air out of it. Yeah. It's like yeah. a release valve versus, you know, it's a forever home. It's like, it's like a single, I mean, in, in a singles ministry, we used to hear this all the time. It's like, well, I haven't found the, there's one person on the planet that God has for me <laughs> right. and I'm waiting on that one person. And it may take me a while because there's several billion out there to find them in that haystack. Well, think of and the like, think there's of the pressure, one person, the pressure that puts on the person you go on a date with. Yeah. Think about the pressure it puts on a house when you call it your forever house. Yeah, or your forever your, car, your forever house, my dream, whatever. Forever, it's not your forever house. There's no such freaking thing. There's not. I mean, really, you're gonna move. Most people are, uh, and sometimes for reasons you don't want to, but. Um, you know, we've moved about every 10 years and we built a big old hairy stinking house up on top of a hill that we thought was going to be the last one and not our forever house, but we're getting all we thought, you know, and, and you know, we were lived there 13 years. It was a beautiful home. It was a magnificent home. It's a show place. And, uh, we thought, well, that's it. You know, we've arrived. That's it. We're on top of the hill. We did it and we're done. And then these people started moving to Nashville and they started paying re- ridiculous numbers and i sold it to one of them <laughs> and then i was homeless now you're a suburban guy now i live with the dead gum burbs again and so <laughs> now you're the guy walking down the street with a little dog i am yeah i know you're that guy you shuffle in the, I'm little the old man with a little dog in the morning on a walk that's me <laughs> exactly that's me me and the little dog both need our walk so shut up if i saw you i would say are you okay sir uh, I, you're that guy now oh my god <laughs> and i would say get off my lawn there we go <laughs> i'm gonna pop your ball kid <laughs> uh michaela is with us in sacramento hey michaela what's up hey well speaking of moving <laughs> all right you're right in the, you're, you're right in the groove here michaela I am, I am. So we're moving from from California to Hawaii. Wow. Um, 
I know. In probably going to look like July-ish. That's what we're shooting for. Did you and your family um, sit down and say, hey, we don't spend enough money on taxes and food and housing. Let's right. up it. <laughs> well, so the reason is my, my husband's um, father is, is has pretty bad Alzheimer's, and we don't have much to longer with him. So we want to Oh, well, now I feel terrible for making a joke. There. Good for you, Michaela. Yeah, Good for you. <laughs> See, she's holy and you're sarcastic. I'm a terrible person. You're a good person, Michaela. All right, so you're going no, to do no, good no. in the world. I'll be quiet. <laughs> so basically, my, my question is, is we're sort of at the end of baby step two. We've got about $12,000 in a personal loan that should be paid off in the next couple months. Um, I'm thinking probably, um, yeah, a couple months. It shouldn't take us very long. Um, and we're, when we move, we're going to be selling. We have a duplex here in Sacramento and a house that we live in. Um, and we're going to be selling both of these properties to go over there. Um, cause I don't want that debt hanging over our heads. Um, but that basically means that we're going to be completely debt free by July, basically when everything sells. Um, and we're going to have about $350 in our pocket or 350,000 in our pocket of just cash. Okay. So the question is, do I take that and Obviously, I'm going to squirrel some away for an emergency fund because at that point, we'll be done with baby step two. Good. Um, And then do we stick the rest of it, the bulk of it, into like another house out there because we're going to be there for a while? Um, Or do we sink that into retirement? Do we split it? I'm just not quite sure what to take, what to do with that bigger lump sum, if that makes sense. How long do you think you're going to be in Hawaii? Well, we've been debating going over there for quite some time before the situation got bad with my husband's dad, um, because the area that we're going to is the Big Island, the Hilo side, and we really want land. We want to do kind of more home How long do you think you're going to be in Hawaii? <sighs> At this point, it would. I, I would like to have stay there for quite some time. I mean, I would like to be there for... How long do you think you you're going to be in Hawaii? <sighs> Ten years. Okay, plus? thank you. Then buy a house. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay. And put it all, all on right. the house and get the house paid off as fast as you can. Because you, well, you might end up spending the rest of your life there. It could be your forever home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But no, you, you really, I would, I would just invest there and, and get, you know, get rid of the debt as fast as I can. I would do all these things. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking, like, the max mortgage I'd want to pull out on anything would be about 150 I don't really want to go more than that. Um, you know, so we could be, we would be able to pay that off relatively quickly. Hopefully. I don't really know exactly what my husband's You can buy a house. Yeah. What kind of house do you get for a million dollars on the big Island? Yeah. So the Hilo side is kind of like, uh, the, the, the new frontier. It's, it's like dirt roads everywhere and jungle and yeah, I've been there, (laughs) but I had no idea that you could get anything in Hawaii for a half million dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're looking at 500, 550 is kind of our max, absolute max. Oh, very cool. And, and your income like, is what? Your household income? Uh, right now, it's about 150. Um, okay, I good. Yeah, so sure pay off then pay off the mortgage in like three years. That'd be awesome, yeah? Yeah, I just don't know if it's going to stay that when we move there, because my husband's going to be transferring with his company, but I don't know what his pay is going to exactly be. Um, you should find so that out. That's also, yeah. Well, it, it's hard because he can't apply for a position until we're closer to time, so we won't know until we're like a month or two out. Yeah, but he should know what the um, position's going to pay, whether he applies for it or not. Well, the thing is, is that the, well, yeah, it's... <laughs> Can he well, call somebody is, over there? Yeah, he's talked to the manager, but the manager's like, well, it's hard for me to pin you on a certain job because you're not here and I can need to fill things now. So that's why he was like, getting, we'll have something for you, I'm sure. It's just... Because he's like been with the company for a long time, and you know, like he's a licensed electrician here. We're not sure, we're not really sure how that's going to transfer to Hawaii because every state's different. With you need to know you know. all of that. That keeps I you from stepping in a hole. Time. You need to get all that stuff. Let's button this plan up. Tighten up your plan. Got to have a job. This is how you. This is how people call me back. I'm only moved, and then six months later, he can't work, and it's got the license didn't. Oh God, don't do that. Get it all straightened out before you go, kiddo. Line it up and push the dominoes. This is The Ramsey Show.
Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. He's the number one best-selling author of the latest book, Building a Non-Anxious Life. He's also the host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, which you ought to check out on the Ramsey Networks because it's insanely popular. All right, Scott's in Roanoke to start this hour. Hey, Scott, how are you? Great. Uh, Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Well, um, I have a 18 uh, son that's starting college in the fall. Mm-hmm. He's actually transferring from a junior college to a four-year college. Mm-hmm. And I got to looking into um, housing for him. And I thought it might be a good idea, a good investment to instead of paying the rent that I'm going to have to pay there, it's at a, it's in Richmond, Virginia. And so it's a kind of an urban campus, you know, so mm-hmm. it's an urban Mm-hmm. setting, mm-hmm. that it would be better for me to buy a house and rent it out to three of his friends. Mm-hmm. Can you think of a school. worse possible tenant than four college boys? <laughs> um, I thought about that. <laughs> you can't get the smell out. You'll have to burn it down. <laughs> 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 oh man uh you know i looked at the exact same thing when our kids i had three kids go through the university of tennessee in knoxville which is um about 200 miles from us and richmond's uh, uh what 100 miles from roanoke right um 150 150 okay so about i mean it's, it's out there away it's a couple hour drive anyway yeah and yeah. so um that's what I thought. I looked at the exact same thing. We were making a bunch of trips back and forth to Knoxville in those days because we had, uh, you know, we had a uh, suite for the football tickets. We had football ticket suite and we had, uh, and we're, so we're down there every weekend for football. And that was also to go see our kids and all that stuff. And um, so what I ended up doing was I bought a condo for me <laughs> to stay in when I went on the weekends, and I didn't let any of them live in it. I paid rent for them to rent a house because I didn't want to deal with all the headaches and the liability of what a, teen, of what a college student could do to hurt themselves or someone else uh, doing ridiculous things that I, I just have memories of me in college and I didn't want to be renting to that guy. And so Scott, I was a good kid and I did not make great choices. <laughs> yeah. I, I, right. Yeah. I, no, that, all that to say, I, I considered what you're doing and I decided not to do it. I decided hey, I did I, in all seriousness, I didn't want that as a tenant because I didn't want the liability. And I also didn't want the headache that it was going to be involved of trying to collect rent from these people. And, um, mm-hmm. I, and, and then I got to clean up the house and rebuild it and put it back on the market after it's all over and try to sell it. And it, I just decided it really wasn't a good investment because it brought too, with it too okay. much risk and too many headaches even though it pissed me off to pay rent because I had three kids in college, never at the same time. So we were down there for like a decade plus. Right. And if I'd have, you know, if I'd had the two girls in there first and then, and they were there somewhat at the same time. And then Daniel would have gone down last. Um, and, uh, and I, and I did have good kids and I don't think they would have torn it up and your kid probably won't tear it up, but, uh, I would have if it had been me, but, um, or the people I ran around with for sure. But the, uh, uh, I, I made the decision it wasn't worth the headache, that the, the, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze, is what it amounted to, for the risk and everything else, even though I wasn't looking at one kid, I was looking at really a decade worth. And I, I would have made some money versus the rent, but, uh, but not much for the time and the headspace and the resources it would have taken up to screw with it. So. And I like, I, I think liability is an underrepresented um, risk there. A college student does one thing, man, and sues you as a landlord. And, and the, the, the risk, I mean, there's a reason that th- that demographic is charged so outrageous fees for car insurance. They just don't make great choices all the time. Yeah. And, and again, it, it might not be, you might have three good young men living there and there might be somebody visiting. You know, that comes right. over one night. Or drunk. somebody's got a girlfriend or something. Yeah. yeah. And, and they fall out of the window or something. I mean, I don't know. I, it's uh, weird stuff happens. And um, 
uh, we just had a story here in Nashville of a college kid visiting from another town that, um, you know, uh, you know, lost his life. Uh, he was downtown partying mm. and, um, you know, they couldn't find the kid for a while and his parents were looking for him. Everybody was panicked and he was from out of town and came to Nashville to party and did party. And then, um, you know, something bad happened and they found his body later. And I just, that kind of stuff just scares the crap out of me. Right. And so I, I, I don't think you can have enough insurance for that. So I, I, I don't want to own that property that that kind of stuff, something like that weird. No, I wouldn't do it, Scott. All that to say, I didn't do it. I was faced with exactly the same choice and a re and more reasons to do it than you did. Cause I had a longer time horizon, 10 years worth of this stuff, not, and three kids worth, not just one, but I did buy a condo and I did sell the condo when we quit going down there, when I gave it the football tickets and all that and, uh, made some money on the condo. So that worked out, but nobody ever lived there. Um, no, none of the students, no, no college students lived there. No college students were harmed in the making of this film. So there we go. Larry is with us in Orlando. Hi, Larry. How are you? Hi, Dave and John. Thank you both for taking my call and for all the help you give other people on the phone call. It's really great at both of you. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Oh, you're, you're welcome. I have a question. My kind of my personal history. I've kind of worked smart. Not, you're supposed to work smart, not hard. I've worked hard, not smart. And so I divide my personal life financially into two categories using the historical term BC before common sense and AD after Dave. And being when I heard your show, I kind of like <laughs> the light bulb came on, and uh, I started going as you term it, gazelle intense. Okay. And so for like the last, I'm retired right now, sixty-nine. I retired Six. just over sixty-seven. Uh-huh. But up until like about nine twenty, I went into that gazelle mode. I was going crazy, saving up and working extra shifts, picking up side gigs. And so you you got a huge net worth now. Well, I, I don't know. If I, it doesn't. I, I don't really know if it is. I got. Well, how much? Uh, What's your net worth? Uh, like I said, a CD, it's a, the money I'm holding in the CD is getting five point six percent, two hundred and forty thousand, about eighty thousand in my savings, about eighty thousand in pre Dave stocks. Pre Dave stocks, me guys bought because they sounded cool. Uh huh. Um, and then in my retirement, it's like, well, one million hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, I thought so. So you got a million and a half dollars or so, and you're 69 years old. Cool. What's your question? Of course, it's kind of, I feel now it's like I've been running, imagine like you're running a sprint. You get to the finish line, you cross it, and you stop, and it's like, well, there's still energy left. I got more running to do. I'm trying to should be in reinvesting that money I've got when it comes out of the CD. Sure. Put, there's a holding pattern. Sure. Um, and you need to enjoy some of it, too. And you need to be generous with some of it. But yeah, I'm not going to stop investing uh, because I'm really, a long time ago, I had enough for me. I'm, I'm now investing for the next generation and the next generation after that. A godly man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, Proverbs says. So yeah, just keep, keep building it up. It's fine. But you don't have to do it at breakneck speed. It's just being intentional, not intense. There's a difference. And let old Larry off the hook. Larry, you've done, you've Larry caught, did good. You've caught up. You've done good. Old, old Larry's, he's gone. New Larry's awesome. Good stuff, Larry. Well done. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Well, if you didn't know, it's National Financial Literacy Month, and we celebrate that big time here at Ramsey Solutions because ever since I very first wrote a book called Financial Peace, people have been picking it up and going, why don't they teach this stuff in the high schools? Why aren't we taught this stuff when we're kids? And that's a really good, excellent comment. And so we fixed that a few years ago, and uh, we put together a thing called the Foundations in Personal Finance by, uh, of course, Dave Ramsey and Ramsey Solutions. And it has now been taught in 48% of the high schools in America. And over 6 million kids have graduated from that class over the years. Lots of great teachers teach this across America. So we celebrate National Financial Literacy Month by doing just this. And you know who makes that possible? Great teachers that choose to teach this curriculum. Great administrators that choose to let their teachers teach this curriculum. And then your kid doesn't get out of high school 
and not understand basics about finance and go make stupid mistakes like most people do, including me. So there you go. One of those great teachers is Travis. Travis is from Aiken, South Carolina, and we wanted to jump on the phone with him. Travis is one of these hero teachers. Hey, Travis, how are you? Great, Dave. Thanks for having me. Uh, and I really want to thank you personally, too. You changed my life and really my family's life. Uh, my my wife and I have been married for 16 years, and we started working the baby steps pretty early on in our marriage, and we've been debt-free for, for three years. So, obviously, I'm a, I'm a big believer in the curriculum. Well, and, thank uh, you. Uh, well, thanks for teaching the class. What school do you teach at? I teach at Aiken High. Okay, at Aiken High School in Aiken, South Carolina. And how many students are in the whole school? Uh, somewhere around 1,100. Okay. And uh, uh, so you teach one class of this a year or what? So uh, we teach uh, another teacher along with me teaches this class. And this year we teach about 150 students. Awesome. Next year... Yeah, next year it's going to be a, a a requirement, or I guess it's a requirement this year for graduation, starting with the incoming freshmen in, in South Carolina. Yes, which it is. is. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be teaching a lot more starting next year. I think there's almost 300 signed up for next year. Very cool. Yeah, we've got a ton of new schools coming on board with that new requirement in South Carolina. They're coming on every day right now with us, right. and so we're really excited about that. So how long have you been a teacher? This is my 20th year. And um, how long have you been doing the foundations in personal finance so class? We started teaching personal finance at Aiken High probably about five years ago. Mm -hmm. I think I've been teaching it for four years. Uh, but you know, now that it's a requirement and been adopted by the state, um, we actually had to go out and have it funded by um, a, a guy locally that's a financial advisor that um, he funded the curriculum for everybody in our county, wow. which is awesome of him. But uh, now that it's adopted by the state, you know, he doesn't have to do that anymore. And it's going to be an option for everybody in South Carolina, which is amazing. Yeah, that's very cool. Very cool. So you've been doing it four years. That means some of the kids, are they're out in the wild now. They've graduated. They're out being adults and stuff. Any of them ever circle back and tell you a success story, what they learned and what happened? Yes, sir. Well, one of the one of the things I love about it is the the college planning part of the curriculum. And I had a girl a couple of years ago. She really took the, the uh, you know, the curriculum talks about paying cash for college and how to do that, how to apply for scholarships and, and really kind of make that like your part time job. And this girl took it to heart and she started applying for two or three a week. And by the time she graduated, she came to me and she told me that she had enough um, that she was not going to have to borrow any money for for school, which is is amazing. So she got fifty or a hundred thousand dollars worth of scholarships. I, I don't know how much she got, but she told me she had enough that she wouldn't be borrowing any money. She yeah. got enough scholarships to cover cover everything. That's very cool. That's yeah. very cool. I'll tag team with you on that, brother. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Good stuff. So yeah, when the and a, uh, Dr. John, Dr. John, that's one of my favorite videos too in the curriculum is uh, w when you explain how you made some of your choices <laughs> going to college. So uh, that was that's certainly uh, one of the fun parts of the curriculum. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks, man. It's it's an honor to circle back and be a part of this thing. And um, as a guy who worked at universities for twenty years, I saw students come in and make some tragic financial. Um, decisions and just they, and they didn't know and, and moms and dads they didn't know they didn't know there was another way to do this and so I appreciate you being a part of changing how the next generation thinks about money so when the kids come into class they're in a personal finance class or freshman sophomore junior in high school what's the most common question you get from them <laughs> well there's a part of the the curriculum that talks about you know paying cash for for a car and there's an activity that we do that's in the curriculum that kind of takes you through the steps of, of buying that first car and and how to go about it and pay cash and, and kind of build up to a car that you want. And 
the first part of the activity is is you know you're you're starting off buying a kind of a clunker for twenty five hundred dollars and 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 they always ask me I think every class has asked me like well you say you've been through these steps why why do you drive a fourteen year old car so that's a question I get a lot but uh, they really love the the activity about about the used car and I love they it. have lots of questions about that yeah cars are a big deal when you're sixteen for sure represents right. freedom. I love it. That's right. Very cool. Travis, thank you. Thank you so much for teaching this class. Travis is a teacher in Aiken, South Carolina at Aiken High School, and one of the heroes out there that's teaching this Foundations in Personal Finance class. And the other hero is the local financial guy there that's been uh, funding and sponsoring the curriculum so everybody could go through. And now, of course, as he said, South Carolina has adopted this and made it a requirement. And so um, we're signing up schools in South Carolina. We're one of the approved options for schools to meet this requirement. And we're signing up schools left and right. So if you're in South Carolina, tell your school they should use ours. <laughs> well, they should. It's the best one, right? <laughs> so why why would you use anything else except the Bentley? Don't don't you know? Don't drive the fourteen hundred dollar car. Drive the Bentley, and I mean school's paying for it so get the best this is the good stuff so cool hey and by the way we're also celebrating by doing a big teacher giveaway any teacher that's out there listening be sure and enter the ramsey teacher appreciation giveaway sponsored by ramsey education one teacher is going to win a five thousand dollar vacation and two more teachers will each win a three thousand dollar vacation go to ramseysolutions.com slash teacher to enter there is no purchase necessary and you don't have to be teaching personal finance to do this that's not the point we just want to honor teachers and teachers work their tail off and the ones that need a vacation they need a vacation yeah and dave while we were on that call i thought of the irony of all of this this is now a mandate going across the country where governments are mandating these kids need to learn about money and i thought dave you should make a education product for congress (laughs) <laughs> all of them looking at these kids being like y'all should learn how to spend and save money be like yeah and so should you pot meet my friend kettle <laughs> exactly <laughs> that would be fantastic <laughs> oh that is an irony it would not sell well though uh well no but people would buy it and donate it to the congress <laughs> You, you, I promise you, I could, if I just started getting up a little, uh, what do they call it, GoFundMe? An FPU Congress edition. A, a, a GoFundMe for just sending all of them total money makeover books. They, they, that would, I would get so much money in in the first 20 the minutes. The video would be a five-minute video of just your face just shaking your head. No. <laughs> no. I said no. No. Stop. No. Just say no. No is a complete Stop. sentence. No. Quit. Stop it. No. These high school kids are, do are off to Stop. a better start yeah. than some of our leaders. Oh, definitely. Maybe they'll be our leaders. Ah, there we go. Yes. Yes. I can say yes to that. This is The Ramsey Show. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jeremy is with us in West Palm Beach, Florida. Hi, Jeremy. How are you? I'm very good, Mr. Ramsey, and uh, thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Uh, So I told my best friend recently that I wouldn't be able to uh, be his best man in his wedding. Uh, because the wedding is in a in Brooklyn, New York, and um, it's not in my wife's and I's budget. Okay. Okay. Why, why, why can't you get in the car and drive up there? 
Well, I don't know. <laughs> we got Ramsey or <laughs> we have Ramsey or I, so I don't know if I would trust them. We're in baby step three right now. And also, um, we have three children under the age of 10, uh, two, four, and nine. So, so leave your wife I, and the kids at home and go to the wedding. Well, drive up I there. Mean, I, really, I know. It doesn't cost I anything. Yeah, that's a far drive. I, I'm a floor. I, I stay in my little area. You know how you don't like to travel far for work? I don't like to travel far from my home. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm just looking up, like, finding excuses or, yes. you know. Yeah, you, you, so. it's not really your best friend. Oh, well, I mean. He's a, fr- he's a friend, but he's not your best friend. Because I mean, your best friend, best your best friend, you would friend. already have driven up there. Yeah. You would do anything for your best friend, right? I know, but like I said, I mean, you don't have to spend ten thousand dollars to do this. It's not an expensive no. thing. You, you're not really no. hardly spending any money to do it. It's just inconvenience that you don't want. When is this wedding? It's uh, July, the middle of July this year. Yeah. So why couldn't you take a couple of shifts or work or figure, mow some lawns or do something to get some gas money? I guess oh, I'm with well, Dave. I, I am doing that now. Okay. <laughs> I, I am working overtime, but you know, we're we're trying to. You know, pay, fill up. Hey, our Jeremy, work. your wife doesn't like this guy. Oh, uh, she does. He was our best, my best man. <laughs> but I mean, in my wedding five years ago, she but, doesn't like this guy. Oh, I don't. I don't say that. But okay. Like, so well, then, what's really going on? Because you know, this is I mean, this is not a money issue. You know, it's not. It doesn't think, take any money to be in this wedding. Well, he, he didn't I ask mean, you to fly to Spain. No, 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 but it's just out of my realm of just my little hometown, um, you know, so I just, I don't really feel like leaving my kids. Okay, say that. That's wife. it. That's the truth. That's, That's the, the truth. truth. Not, it's not my budget. Not, not, not budget. It's say, hey, dude, I don't, I don't love you enough. I don't want to be a part of this enough to leave my town. Yeah. That's the truth. Brooklyn scares the hell out of me. I'm staying in Palm Beach. Yeah. I'm not going. And. Maybe he's your best friend, but you're not his. Like, yeah, I can't even wrap my head around that sentiment. Like, if my buddy's called, I'd walk off air right now if I had to. Like, that's just that's what you do. But that's not your relationship with this guy, and that's okay. And it, now, if he was asking you to spend ten grand, and Absolutely. you're in the middle of getting out of debt, and you we've had we've had that call over the years. You know, my you know my wants me to be a bridesmaid, and it's a twenty thousand dollar thing with a ticket, and we have to do the brides. We have to go to three towns for different bridesmaids things, and then we're going to fly to Mexico, and <laughs> and I don't have and I I don't have the money to do all that, and they're mad at me. Well, that's tough. I mean, I agree. Don't do that one, okay? But this is just getting the car and drive to Brooklyn, man. I mean, it's not it's not like a lot of money. Yeah, and it's it's a long drive, and it's annoying. And, and it's, by the way, when you have a good friend, there's a lot of times you end up helping out. I don't want to help friends move, but you do it. I don't want to help friends, I don't, but you do it. I don't. I'll hire a mover. But uh, I'm not uh, exa- same, same. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, but, I, I, I mean. And you can't use my pickup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't. No one even asks, Dave. No one I even know. asks. Good. I'm glad. Don't ask. But yeah, yeah. man. So it's I, a, I, you do whatever you want to do, dude. But I, I'm. I think we did boil it down to this is not about a budget. You this don't want to go. It's about you don't want to go. That's why. I, that's why I was blaming your wife because I thought you don't want to go. But it is you, after all. I was wrong. It's not your wife. It's you. You. You don't want to go. And it's not that it's not in your budget, and it's not that you have to take care of the kids. They, these are. That's all mythology. You just don't want to go. And, you know, that's cool. You can make that decision, okay? Um, and, and and you're fine. I'm fine with that. If you don't want to go, just tell them, I don't want to go. I don't. I can't. But don't blame something. a budget. Don't blame Ramsey. Don't blame us for that. Oh, God. Please don't blame Ramsey. I mean, we get blamed for everything else. James is in Augusta, Georgia. Hi, James. How are you? Hey, I, uh, I also am better than I deserve, Dave, and I appreciate you uh, taking the call for me. Our pleasure. How, How can you? we help, sir? Well, I'll boil it down, Dave. Um, I'm a follower. I'm at Baby Step 6, but I got a couple of Baby Step 2 um, nicks I need to take care of. I have two mortgages. One is a rental, and one is a primary. And I'd like your advice on which of those to pay off first. If you'd like the numbers, I'd be glad to what, give them. What, what is in Baby? No, that's Baby Step 2, right? Those yes, are mor- mortgages or Baby Step 6? Right. Well, one is an optional um, uh, spending because it's not my primary. So oh, I got you. I've, but no, rental property goes in six two. So, but oh, so you don't good. really ha- you don't have any consumer debt left, right? Correct. Okay. Cool. How much you owe on the rental? 
Uh, I owe ninety six. I'm sorry. Ninety five. Ninety five thousand. How much do you owe on your present residence? My present residence is one ninety six. So okay. that's a one ninety five payoff. Cool. You got any cash to throw at either one of these numbers? I do. Uh, I do. I've probably got about, um, I want to say 30. I maybe could even pump that to about 50. And um, still have your emergency fund in place. And still have my emergency fund. And yeah. your household income is what? Um, we're, we're tilting right at about 97, you know, pushing at the hundred. Oh, you've done a more. really good job, James. Way to go. <laughs> Way to go, man. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it's taken a, it's taken a while, um, but I just don't like I just don't like having that mortgage. I'm 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 a believer in what yeah. you do and, and what you recommend. So I know one of those debts has got to go sooner than later. Yeah, my thought was one is a near goal and the other is maybe a far goal. So yeah. what do you think? Yeah, I, if they were close to equal, I always pay off the house first, my residence first, mm-hmm. and that's just mm-hmm. risk management. Meaning, if everything goes sideways and I have to lose something, that's not the one I want to lose. I want to lose the rental, okay? So I would always pay off my home first. But this rental is half of, less than half of your house. And so, and with throwing 50 at it, you probably knock it out in another year. And then that would leave a lot of cash fright freed up, uh, in, additional income freed up then to throw all of it at the mortgage and be done. So it's okay to do it either way. Um, okay. there, you're still going to end up in a. It's going to take you exactly the same number of months to be debt free, regardless of which one you pay off. No, it's not. If you pay off the rental first; it'll it'll probably get you out of debt faster because the rental income is freed up. Yes. Now I now I do like no. that approach because it is a it is a money maker. And I will just let you know that I do have a second rental, and that is a fully paid for ten thirty one exchange that I managed to do a couple of years ago. So I've got good passive income from both of them. Good. I'm at about thirty five hundred a month. Good. And what I want to do is just rack and stack all that good passive income yeah. onto that rental mortgage and blow that baby out of the water in less than two years. Two yeah. years is my goal. Yeah, I think you're probably with you throw 50 at it it's probably one year <laughs> right but i got to convince the wife of, of that well you got an emergency fund beyond the 50 right i do yes, so why sir. do we have to convince the wife what's the wife's problem with fifty thousand laying well, in the bank or 50 we, extra we, we, <laughs> well we might want to we might want to not go down that rabbit hole dave and i apologize i'm trying to keep it short for you but she just has a different she has kind of a she has kind of a different approach from a different portion of the of the world where she comes from, and her priorities um, are like east and west. If that makes sense to you, sure, sure, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, now you explain why she's wrong. Okay. <laughs> oh well, whatever. Talk it, talk it through, and figure it out. But I'm going to throw fifty at the rental, and stack and pack on the rental, and then stack and pack on the house. And you're probably going to be out of debt a slight bit faster going that direction than the other direction. But there's not a wrong answer because either way, in about five or six years, you're going to be 100% debt free with all three, all the two rentals and your home. It's going to put you in a really sweet position. Hey, thanks for the call. Scripture of the day, Philippians 2, 3 and 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. Thomas Sowell says, when you want to help people, you tell them the truth. When you want to help yourself, you tell them what they want to hear. Ooh, whoa, whoa, ouch. That could happen around here. We do love people, and yet sometimes we are a bit brutal in our truth-telling because we want to be real sure you hear it <laughs> for your sake. 
Mm-hmm. It doesn't change our lives. It changes yours. And that's what we're here for. All right. Dom is with us in Philadelphia. Hi, Dom. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, Mr. Ramsey. Thank you for taking the time to have me on. Sure. Um, I'm three years unemployed. I've been taking care of my mother. Um, there's about 400 grand left to pay on the mortgage for the house I lived in my whole life. Um, I made a promise to her that I would never put her in a nursing home. And I've just been struggling to find the right health care in home and um, just how to keep the house. Uh, my question to you, Mr. Ramsey, is if you were in my position, what's the first thing that you would do? Wow. So you're how old? 23. You're 23. And you've yeah. been taking care of your mom for three years since you were 20. What's wrong with her? Uh, she's got Parkinson's. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's progressing, I assume. Yeah, it's gotten worse. I mean, at the beginning, obviously, I've been through multiple companies, uh, multiple in-home health aides. I was working out of high school, uh, a little family shop for, you know, automotive. And uh, it was fine back then, but, you know, it was progressing. And I saw that, you know, gradually she you know, didn't really know what was going on. And yeah, um, So how's she doing know, right this second? Well, now it's it's just me. It's been me for a while, and if you want something done right, you know, do it yourself. And uh, no, that one I ask. I said, "How is she doing? What's her she's, condition? She's good. Health yeah. condition? Yeah, she's right good. This? She's, she's good right now. No, no, she's not good. Degrading. Yeah, I mean, what what um, well, kind of condition is she in today? Uh, she's at home. Um, she doesn't leave the house ever. It's just me feeding her with her every day, and and you know she. It's hard to move. It's it's on and off the disease. Um, yeah. So, you know, how um, just how, take, how are the bills being paid? Yeah. So, uh, she was an anesthesiologist, and um, she has the she took a lump sum of the retirement money, and that comes out of an IRA that she put it into, and that's what's paying the mortgage and everything else. And then there's social security that comes in every year. Um, Mm -hmm. I think to the tune of 20 something. Okay. 25. Yeah. So Dom, you sound completely drained and exhausted. Mm -hmm. Like you're on your last thread. Like you're just down. Your, your tank's empty is what it sounds like. Am I wrong? (sighs) Yeah. I thought taking on all of this stuff, the house and the paperwork and everything, would would be easier with the support of the other half of my family. But they, they don't really want to get involved. So, um, What's the other half of your family? My dad's side, and the grandparents. Oh, and your dad's gone. Yeah, no, I mean they divorced. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. Was, okay. Yeah. So yeah. you're 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 the only child. I have a brother, but he's in college. Mm-hmm. And how much is in this IRA that's uh, deteriorating along with this whole situation? About 500 Okay. All right. Dom, I think you made a promise as a 19-year-old that you weren't wise enough to make at the time. And just listening to you, it sounds like you've exceeded your capacity to help. And the most gracious, honorable thing you could do for your mom is to get her into a place where they can take care of her. Or hire someone. I just know, or use I her, just know how it is in those you, places. Use her, no, it's not. It's not they're, they're not all hell. Some of them do a great job. But, or just hire somebody to come in with her money and take care of her. Yeah. And you, you go get a life. Yeah. I don't think you it's can just, keep going much longer. I'm not talking to a guy who has much left gas, gas left in his tank. Yeah, it's crazy because, you know, I, I went over most of the paperwork for some of these companies that came in for in-home health aides. You know, these people that they hire to do this work get paid less than somebody flipping a burger at McDonald's. And so hire sense. one directly. Find they somebody who's a nurse and hire them. You have $500,000. Right. Okay. And I, can I ask you a, a difficult question? Can I ask you something that's painful? Yeah. How much longer do you think she has? I 
I try and keep her spirits up, you know. That wasn't what I asked. Always talking negative. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this is not negative. It's facts. Maybe five. Five five years. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to be 28, and it sounds like this. I don't think so. She's 74. I don't think so. I don't think that this mom wanted this for her son for when he's 28 years old to have done this for eight years. I think you use her money to hire someone to come into her house and take care of her. And you get back up on your feet and create a little distance uh, physically and emotionally from the situation. So you'll have a much better head to help her with her care than you do right now. You are out of gas, young man, and you need some help. She's also in debt to the IRS. How much? Three hundred thousand uh, dollars. More like two two fifty. Okay. Well, they yeah. can't get they can't get the IRA. Yeah. So just spend the money out of the IRA to take care of her. What's the house worth? So last time it was appraised, uh, seven, it was around seven fifty, which yeah. was like a year and a half ago. That's when they'll get their money is when that house sells. Until then, they're not getting anything. I, I want to keep it, though. I, I, I want to try and at least keep Why? it. I mean, I've lived here my whole no, life. No, you don't need that house. No? No. Mm-mm. That house needs to go away. Bro, you're trying to do so much, and it's noble, but you got two guys who I mean, we're telling you, you can't lift the weight on the bar, and we're watching it crush you. Yeah. We're your spotters, man. Don't don't push again. Okay? It's, uh, you know, we, we want you to win. We want your mom to be taken care of. We don't hate her. We're not angry with her or you. You're a noble, very cool, neat young man that's trying to do the best he can. But, man, the number of sighs that have come out of your mouth, the depth of the angst that is in your voice is amazing. You don't even hear it, but we get as clear as a bell on this end. And, um, man, I I think the best gift you can give her is for you to get in a better place. Absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Yeah. You, you have sure. got to go get a life. It's time now. And you don't have to abandon her to do that. You can still make sure she's taken care of, whether that is in a facility or whether it's you just go, go down to the hospital and say, hey, who's a nurse that works part time that wants some full time work? I'm going to hire one right now. And you can hire them as cheap as you can pay a nursing home and bring them in and manage that. And then you, you step back, get you a job get you some space emotionally, financially. I've been unemployed for three years is how you led the call. The lack of dignity in your voice when you said that, even though you're doing something that's very noble and dignified. So you really need to do this for you, and the healthier you are, the stronger stronger position you're going to be in to care for her through these last stages of this disease. I'm so sorry you're facing this. So... Here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to uh, put you on hold, and Christian's going to pick up. We're going to set you up with one of our financial coaches at our cost. We're going to pay for it to come alongside you and walk with you because you're a, by yourself doing this. There's no one speaking into your life, and you need to get in a good church and have a good pastor with you. You need to get some people around you that are encouraging you to lift up your arms while you're tired like this, brother. Don't stay on this track, man. It's not a good track. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus.